Hello. We're going to be looking at how we can support our students with their spelling, punctuation and grammar through reading of a text. The students often think and refer to SPAG and all we're talking about is how a writer uses punctuation, how a writer uses particular words and phrases to form their piece. It's really important that the students have a clear understanding of how SPAG works and how it can help them further along in their GCSE exams to get the best marks. So what we're going to do is we're going to read a passage. And as we read the passage, we're going to look at how and why the author has chosen particular words and phrases and certainly why punctuation marks have been used. I'm going to read the first paragraph to you. As I read the first paragraph, I want you to notice where the punctuation marks are. And I'll actually say the punctuation marks. Chapter one, a perfectly normal family. This is a story of Barnaby Brockett, comma. And to understand Barnaby, comma, first you have to understand his parents, semicolon. Two people who were so afraid of anyone who was different that they did a terrible thing that would have the most appalling consequences for everyone they loved. Our students know that we start our sentence with a capital letter and we end our sentence with a full stop. But often we forget to put in other punctuation marks. As you look through the first paragraph, you can see there are several punctuation marks. We've got a full stop, two commas, and a semicolon. The commas are to break up the story in this place. This is a story of Barnaby Brockett. And to understand Barnaby is a drop in clause, an extra piece of information. And so we sandwich the extra piece of information with commas. It could have read, this is the story of Barnaby Brockett. First, you have to understand his parents. But we wanted to, the author obviously wanted us to make it very clear that to understand Barnaby, we need to understand his parents. And then we have a semicolon. The semicolon here is showing us that what comes next is very, very closely related to the whole sentence. First, you, you have to understand his parents, semicolon. Two people who were so afraid of anyone who was different. So his parents and the next phrase are very, very closely related. Hence, we use a semicolon. And then obviously we finish that paragraph with a full stop. You may have noticed too, that in this paragraph, we've got extra capital letters. Oh, I've changed that color. We've got extra capital letters. We've got Barnaby Brockett. Proper nouns have capital letters. A proper noun is a name for a person, a place, or a thing. You scan further down into the next paragraph, you will see Alistair, a proper noun. Again, Barnaby. In the next paragraph, the metro train, the name of something. So proper nouns always have a capital letter. In this paragraph, we're going to look at how we can pick out particular words that an author uses and how we can extend our vocabulary by looking at these words. Also in this paragraph, we're going to be looking at some common mistakes that students use with homophones. Firstly, we're going to look at the word normal. Now it is clear that the author has deliberately chosen that word. We see the word normal written 
five or six times. Generally, this is something we would not want our students to do unless they can have made a deliberate choice as this author has. But what we can do here is we can ask our children, how many other words do you know that mean the same as normal? Get your child to write those words down. Work with them. How many words could we think of? We might think of usual, ordinary, typical, average. It's a great way to get our students to expand their vocabulary and think about using words in a different way. So we could say he led a, a usual life in a typical house, in a normal neighbourhood where he did the average things in a typical way. It's a really good way of getting our students to think about the choice of words they use. Another thing we'd like to highlight is the use of this word, were. We've got were here, and then the same sounding word spelt differently here. This is something that we really want our students to get to understand. There are four words that all sound the same. The two were there. We've also got W E apostrophe R E. And we've also got W E A R were. W E A R. The first word, W-H-E-R-E, -E, is used as a location or an adverb of time. So he lived where? He lived in a normal neighbourhood. His wife was normal, as were. Now this were is the past tense word of to be, as were his two children. If we look further down, W-E apostrophe R-E, that's a contraction, it's a word made smaller. We are. And then the final one, W-E-A-R, I wear a red coat. So that's the one there, you're talking about putting something on. Were, were, were and were are words that children will often confuse. And it's really helpful as we're reading a text, if we find such words that we point them out to our, to our readers. The next book to look at is The Graveyard Book by Neil Gaiman. Read through the first few paragraphs of this book and see how many features that you can pick out to do with punctuation, spelling or grammar. What did you notice in these paragraphs? Hopefully you identified all the commas, semicolon. Did you notice that the author used a range of sentence lengths from very long sentences to here where we have quite a short sentence, the man Jack paused on the landing. These are deliberate choices which help with the reading but also add drama to the text. The use of vocabulary in these sentences are also important. Here we have the word wisps of night, the mist slithered and twined. 
These are not words that we may use in our everyday conversation, but are words that we would like our students to use as they become more experienced writers. And it's really helpful if we talk about how these words impact the writing, impact that paragraph. Could they use a better word, a more effective word, a less effective word? And doing work like this with our students help them to understand the importance of using a wide range of vocabulary.